Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a step back and going back to thinking about what matrix multiplication actually means. This might seem like a weird video because we've been doing matrix multiplication since Algebra 2, maybe in high school, um, at least since the beginning of linear algebra, so why should we go back to talking about it when we're talking about data science concepts? The reason is that I think a lot of people can go through the steps of a matrix multiplication, no problem. It's a pretty pro simple process to go through. But it's not always clear what we're doing or what the final result, what this matrix product represents in terms of the component matrices that we multiplied. So that's what this video will aim to do, is give you that conceptual understanding, that context of matrix multiplication, so that when you're doing these things in your linear algebra or data science classes, you get a better sense of what's going on. So let's go with a simple example. First, I want you to ignore the context, and I just give you a matrix multiplication problem. So I say, here's matrix M1, it's 3 by 2. Here's matrix M2, it's 2 by 3. Go ahead and multiply them. The first thing you'll probably notice is that the product will be 3 by 3, because when we multiply matrices, we need this dimension to match up to that dimension, and the final result is this dimension by this dimension. So I think most people are comfortable with that idea. And to actually compute the product, it's really not a huge deal, right? Uh, for example, to get this first two, we would do a dot product of the first row by the first column. To get this three, for example, we would do the dot product of the uh, third row with the second column. So one times one plus two times one gives us that three, and all of the nine numbers are obtained in that way. But again, what does this really mean? How is this matrix related to these two matrices? Let's now apply a context to the problem to get an idea of what we're actually calculating. Let's say that there are three source cities. So either you're going on a trip. You're going on a trip starting from either city A, city B, or city C. Your destination cities are also three of them. They're either going to be F, G, and H. And in the middle, you can think of this as like a layover if you're taking a plane trip or just a rest stop if you're taking a car trip, for example. You can either stop over in cities D or cities E. Uh, moreover, there's these red lines, which tells you how many paths, how many ways there are to get from each city to each other city. So for example, A to D, there's two ways you can get there, which are these two red lines. From B to E, there's just one red line. And for example, from E to F, there's no way to get from E to F. There's no line connecting them, so that will be zero. Now, if you take this picture, you're going to notice that it's fully encoded in these two matrices here. And we're going to write some extra letters here to show that. This first matrix here gives you all of the paths to get from the source cities to the layover cities. And I'm going to go ahead and put A, B, C, and then D, E. For example, A to D, there's two routes, right? We decided that there's two routes there. Uh, for example, from B to D, there's no routes to get there. So we see this first matrix fully encodes the number of ways to get from any of your source cities to any of your layover cities. Now, as you might see coming up, the second matrix is going to be encoding the second part of this picture, the number of ways to get from your layover cities to your, the destination cities you want to get to. So here we'll put D and E and then F, G, H. Again, verify there's one way to get from D to G, correct, and we can verify all four routes in the same way. Okay, so um, before we go to what the product means, we get a better idea of why these dimensions have to match up. These inner dimensions need to match up because usually they associate to the same ideas or concepts. In this case, this two matches up to the uh, layover cities, and this two matches up to, again, the layover cities. So that's why you need these two numbers to be the same, because they match up to the same conceptual understanding. Okay? And again, we see why the final dimensions are 3 by 3, because in the end, we have something where it's A, B, C, something associated with A, B, C on the rows, and then something associated with F, G, H on the columns. Now, what do these numbers actually mean? For example, let's take this first number here, this number 2. How do we obtain it? We do 2 times 1 plus 0 times 0. So if we're trying to count the total number of ways to go from A through F, we would say that, okay, so we could go through A to D, and then from D we could go to F, or we can go A to E. There's no way, but we still need to figure out to count it. And then from E we can go to F. So that's why this dot product exactly calculates the number of ways to get from A to F. Let's do one more just for the sake of clarity. So let's do this number here since it's the biggest. How many ways are there to get from C to G? So of course, from C to G, we either have to go through D or E. So we can go one way to get to D, and then once we're at D, there's one way to get to G, so that's one times one. That's the first part of the dot product. The second part of the dot product says there's two ways to get from C to E. 
And then once you're at E, there's one way to get to G. So that's the second part of the dot product, giving a total of three ways to get from C to G. So uh, even though we drew a lot more stuff on the diagram, it's not just a simple matrix multiplication. Hopefully it makes a little more sense of what we're actually doing behind the scenes. In this case of the matrix multiplication, we are counting paths. We are using the product of two matrices, each of which contains part of the uh, trip to calculate the total number of ways to get from any source to any destination. Now I want to do one more contextual understanding because of course every time you do matrix multiplication it'll be in a different context. So let's just go through one more. Okay, so we're back with the second uh, contextual understanding of matrix multiplication. So just wanted to go through one quick example. Let's say that the first matrix is, uh, we'll give some dimensions here. It's two by three where the rows are two different months. So something that happened in January versus something that happened in February. The columns are the total amount of money that you spent on three different categories within that month. So for example, food, clothes, and gas. So for example, this 100 says that in January you spent $100 on gas. This 20 says that in February you spent $20 on clothing. Now, uh, the second matrix here is three by two. So it's three by two. We see that the dimensions are gonna be fine because this dimension three matches to this dimension three. Why does it match? Because the stuff it relates to is the same stuff it related to in the other matrix. So that's why the dimensions have to match here, okay? Um, and this matrix tells you for each of the three categories, food, clothes, and gas, tells you two pieces of information. The first one is the tax rate you experienced. So a 5% tax on food, 10% on clothes, 20% on gas. And the last column is all the same. It's just a divisor for the total budget. So we said that every month you have $1,000 to spend. So we put one over 1,000 for all three of these entries so that when we do the matrix multiplication, we'll get a fractional amount of spending um, for that month. How much of the budget you used up that month on these categories, okay? So we go ahead and do the matrix multiplication and its dimensions will of course be two by two, which is exactly what we see here. And how do we interpret this? For example, how do we interpret uh, for the total taxes? We see that in January we spent 300 on food, which is taxed at 5%, so we do 300 times that 5%. We spent 50 on clothes taxed at 10%, so we do 50 times that 10%, and we do 100 times 20%, and that's gonna give us the total amount of money we spent on taxes in January. Because we take each category, the amount of spending, multiply it by the tax rate for that category, and we're gonna get the total amount of money you spent on taxes. And that'll be the same for February. How do we interpret this second column when we multiply entries with the second column? Well, for example, we will take $300 spent on food, multiply that by one over a thousand. That says that for food, we spent 30% of our budget on food. We add that to 50 over a thousand. So that will just give us 5% of our money spent on clothes. We do the same thing with gas. And when we add up these categories, which basically means taking the dot product of the January row with this total budget column, we're gonna get the total percentage of our budget that we spent across all three of these categories for a given month. And that's exactly what we see here. So this final two by two matrix tells an interesting story, right? Uh, it basically says that if you're looking only at total taxes, you're saying, oh, I spent more on taxes in January. But if you look at fraction of budget, it seems I used up more of my fraction of my budget in February. So this could be useful for some accounting purposes, for example. So this is just another version of looking at what a matrix multiplication means. The two main points I wanted to get across were A, matrix multiplications usually always have a context in real data science or real world problems, and this is some examples of them. The second one is the dimensions are actually very important. Um, we learned the basic rule that your dimensions have to match up in a certain way, and we can visually check that, but there's a much deeper reason the dimensions have to match up, because usually the dimensions that are matching up are kind of linking to the same concept. In our previous example, it was the intermediate cities. In this example, it was the categories. So you paying attention to that can help you really, really get at the meat of what this problem is trying to tell you. Okay, so that's what matrix multiplication really is. Until next time.